All right, guys, we're going to pick up where I left off changing that crankshaft position sensor out last time. Just waiting for the engine coolant temperature to heat up so we can redo the top dead center offset, if you recall. I'll link that up in the upper right. But the top dead center offset we had was negative 1.85 degrees, which was out of spec. We need it to go down at least to negative 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we've got this heated up enough so that we can do that. We're going to move under the hood and show you how to adjust the injection pump timing. All right, guys, we're under the hood. The first thing we're going to do is remove our engine shroud. That's held in by four 10 millimeter bolts. They're captive, so they're not going to come out. You're just going to loosen them up and then you'll be able to take off the shroud. Okay, we got those loosened up. This guy's held on just by an extra thread or two, I guess. There he goes. All right, now with that out of the way, the next thing we're going to have to remove in order to have good clear access to the injection pump, we're going to have to take this intake manifold crossover off. It's also held on by 10 millimeter bolts. There are six of them here. As soon as we take this off, we'll go ahead and pull the electrical connectors. And then we'll disconnect it at the turbocharger end. It's like my little uh, detent ball holding this extension on is going. Okay. Okay, with those guys out of the way, we'll disconnect this sensor and we'll disconnect this map sensor up here. All right, now we're going to need to loosen these two bolts and they are an eight millimeter. I guess I should say screws really for these clamps. want to loosen these up to the point where they don't have as much tension on them and that they get loose enough to wiggle by hand like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this little short extension and then what we're going to be able to do is twist up, break the silicone seal in the sleeve and remove the extension. I'm going to have to go get a different socket for that. We'll come back in just a sec. All right, so these are 13 millimeter bolts. Take them both off. them where they won't get lost. At this point we've got everything disconnected on this guy. Making sure he's good and loose and moving around like that. And then we should be able to come up here and twist him off. Now I had redone the seal on this a while back, so it is 
going to be super tight. And I might even have to get a different tool to break that seal. We'll see. Oh, he's going to go. All right. That gets this guy off. Set him aside. He's going to be uh, pretty hot to the touch since we had to warm the engine up. So make sure that you've got gloves on. The next thing I'm going to do, just more of a safety thing than anything else, before anything gets in here, I'm going to cover up our intake, put a couple of pieces of wood on here so that we don't get anything falling in there. Then, let's see if I can reorient our light to where you can see without too much glare. It's getting a little bit overcast. Hopefully that's pretty good. So this is our injection pump right down in here. Here you've got your upper radiator hose coming into your coolant crossover. And this is the injection pump right under here. And what we're going to need to do if I can get myself oriented here. And probably we're going to need to come in with the camera on the other side so that you can see. Let me go move that over and then we'll pick it up. All right, guys, I'm going to try to get you a view of what we're after here. There's three mounting nuts on here. And I've got these sticks pointing to each one. And hopefully we can get the camera in here enough where you can see the three of these. There's one right on top of the injection pump. And then there's one on either side at the bottom. Its mount is somewhat triangular in shape. So hopefully that's all coming through here. And I'll try to shine an additional flashlight in here to hopefully light this up some, somewhat. But it, it is just uh, very, very dark angles and caver cavernous in here. And I'll pull some of these wire looms back we come back this way you should be able to see the one on top very clearly and then right down here with the flashlight on top you should be able to see this left guy very clearly and then the one on the right is very similarly placed right down in the lower side so with that out of the way the next thing I want to show you is if I take these sticks out of the way for a moment you see right on the top here on, this, on the passenger side flange. We're on the front of the vehicle looking down. Again, I'll try to get these looms out of the way and shine these lights in here. I've got my stick pointing at a hole here and a hole here. And that's important because I'm going to show you a tool in a minute that has to fit in those two holes. So let's back out for a second and look at the tools. So the way this gets adjusted this tool here fits in those two holes I just showed you. It's got a cutout to fit along the side of the pump, and it's going to fit in like that. I'm going to put it in there and show you in a second. Then it's got a, a square cutout at the top where you can put a small breaker bar in here, and it'll give you the leverage to turn the pump. The pump's going to be very difficult to turn because of all the pressure of the injection fuel lines. So that's what this tool does. Then there's another set of tools. This one's from OTC that I have, a 6087. I'll, I'll put it at the bottom of the description these other numbers, cheaper than, than the dealer. There's two wrenches in here. So if I can get them against the blue background so you'll be able to see them a little better. There's two wrenches in here. And, you know, it covers a range of years for the six and a half, but basically between these two tools are how you get an ability to fish down and loosen that bolt or that nut rather on the left passenger side that I showed you and then have another one that can come down and loosen the one on the driver's side. Now I'm not exactly sure um, which one of these goes where when I when I get it placed well, you'll be able to see it but I mean, the point I'm making is between these two tools you'll be able to loosen up all three of those fasteners. And what we're going to do before we do that though if we come back over and look at the pump area Definitely need a small stool for this job to reach in over the bumper. What we're going to do before that, again, going to move some of these 
looms out of the way. I'm gonna use one of these sticks actually just to try and hold this loom out of the way. Then get another one here to show you what I'm talking about. So on the top flange here, we're gonna clean this off. And we're gonna find a way to basically mark this. So I'm just scraping off some, some crud here for a moment to show you what I'm after. But we're gonna find a way to mark the current timing position so that we can see very clearly how we're moving it. The service manual indicates that one millimeter, uh, I believe it's one millimeter, I, if I'm making a mistake, I'll correct it in the bottom, but I believe one millimeter is equal to one degree. And, and the way this is adjusted is, if you get that tool on there and you rotate it to the passenger side, you're gonna be going in the positive direction. And if you rotate it to the driver's side, you're gonna be going more in the negative direction. And since for our TDC offset, we're trying to go more positive, take it from negative 1.8 closer to negative 0.7, we're gonna be trying to rotate it roughly just under a millimeter to the passenger side. So that's, that's, the, that's the whole point of this project. So let me get that cleaned up so that we can make a nice visible scribe mark. Uh, try to get some of these looms out of the way so those, those uh, fasteners might be more easier to see. And then I'll show you the correct positioning of the wrenches. All right, guys, let me show you how some of these tools are gonna fit, right? So I got the stick here just as a reference point as we zoom in. So we've got the top fastener right here. You can see right over here is one of the holes for the tool to do the adjustment. Right down here is the other hole. And then at the very bottom is the other fastener in this view. So I'm gonna show you how that adjusting tool fits on first. So this guy is gonna come down, might block your view here for just a moment. You get him into these alignment holes, he's gonna fit in just like that. And then you're gonna put the breaker on top so that you get some leverage. The other tool, if we get this guy out of here, of the two tools in, in your kit, it really doesn't matter what you use for the top one, in my opinion, because he's easily accessible for any of them. I'm probably gonna use this, this version of the tool. Whoops. Actually, I probably will come in like this. I'll tell you one thing, it's very cramped. And then I'll, I think I'm just gonna go with the curvature end down below on this one. Might block your view for just a second while I get this on. Right, now we got this on. And so that should give us the clearance to loosen those two and, and to uh, get the alignment tool on. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna loosen the bottom two, and I'll show you how to put the tool on the other side in a minute. And then we're gonna leave the top fastened we, we got this cleaned off now, so we still need to make our scribe mark. We're gonna insert our rotational tool, and then after we got our scribe mark and our rotational tool in with the bottom two loosened, only then are we gonna loosen this one. We're gonna move it over. Probably I'll start off with maybe a half a millimeter to the passenger side, retighten all three of them down, tightening this one first, of course, and then we'll put the uh, crossover back on, we'll start it up, and we'll see what our new TDC offset is. So, Going to go uh, reorient the camera so you can see how the tool fits on the other side, and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, before we get into this, let's just review this uh, documentation one more time. So picking up where we left off on the previous video. Actually, I, I misspoke. It's, it's negative 0.75 rather than 7.0 as the outside range that we're trying to get into. We're trying to drop in between negative 0.25 to negative 0.75. And again, these are the factory specifications. And the reason we're redoing this after we did the previous repair of the crankshaft position sensor is to account for timing chain wear. But when you do that whole thing that we did at the end of the video I linked up at the top, and, and, and you get down here, to, um, ah, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. So when you get down when this, and check that this range is not there, that's when you have to continue the next step, which is what we're doing, which is adjusting the injection pump itself. So, you know, we've turned off the engine and we're gonna loosen those flange nuts using the wrenches I showed you. One of the things I said earlier is I said one millimeter equals a degree. Actually, one millimeter equals two degrees. So a little bit of correction there, and I'll also put it at the bottom of what I said previously. So I'm really looking to move this 
about one millimeter. Uh, I'm excuse me, I believe this about a half a millimeter so that I can take one degree off and that should drop me around 0.8. And, you know, that's close enough, actually, if I can get there. But I'll try to wiggle it down to the 0.75, so maybe in two tries. Um, and then we're going to rotate the injection pump. So like I said before, using that rotation tool, we're going to scribe a line so we know what the current timing is. And then we're going to use that tool to move it. In my case, I'm going to move it towards the passenger side because I want to achieve a more positive offset number. So I'm going to rotate it towards the passenger side. If I needed to achieve a more negative top dead center offset number, I would be rotating the pump towards the driver's side of the vehicle. And again, you know, it doesn't matter any orientation you're in. It's driver's side versus passenger side. It's pretty clear cut. Now, another thing I wanted to show you is, so what, what's going on here? It's just worth noticing the, the theory behind this. This chain is only used to keep the injection pump in time with the valve train. It's not like a gasoline engine. So it, it's just got a very specific purpose. And when you get wear, you're, you're going to get this timing kind of fall out of the range that we saw earlier uh, in that other section of the manual. When we take a look at the pump and see how it's mounted, this is the actual injection pump. And we can see that it sits on these three studs and that these three nuts that are retaining it are what we're going to be adjusting. So very straightforward, right? Um, it, it's the hardest part is the, getting the access to these nuts. All right, so let's get into it. All right, guys, you can see I cleaned off the flange up here between the injection pump and where it mounts. And I'm gonna come down here with this Sharpie now and make myself a little scribe mark. Now, I'm not gonna trust just this ink because, you know, if we get some kind of mishap or we get a little splash of something, diesel or oil or something, it might rub it off. But I'm going to have to block your view to come down here and kind of, you know, make some marks with this little chisel is what I plan to do. Just kind of cut a scribe into this. It's aluminum, so it shouldn't be too bad. But let's go ahead and, and get going on what we need to take off. So I'm going to start with this lower nut that's down on the um, passenger side there. And the tool end that I'm going to be using for this looks like this, this end of the tool. So maybe if we just zoom out a second, I'm gonna use this particular tool and this end to get that lower nut on the passenger side. So let's go back down there. It's a really tight fit. But uh, it's doable. You can see here, I've got the wrench on the nut. Right, and that's just how it goes. And then you get enough clearance. You can obviously, you know, from the orientation, I'm leaning over the uh, radiator here, so I'm gonna be turning it to the right to loosen it. So you get that much clearance before you hit this hose up here. Be careful, you don't wanna force it because it could be old and crack. So you got this little fuel hose here. So you can go that far and then you back it off and you just rinse, repeat. Now, because it's a 12 point, it's got 12 uh, points on the nut, that you have to line up with the tool. So it can be difficult to get it just right, especially at this orientation here where I cannot get to where I need to get to because I'm trying to let you guys see it. But let me see if I can get it on there one more time from this angle, just so you get the hang of it. Yeah. Gotta be super patient with this one. I think the one on the driver's side is going to be even worse. What's, what it keeps you from getting it right where you want it is this little sensor up here. I was trying to avoid taking them off, but I might have to. Right, there we go. Got him on there again. Just kind of wiggle him onto the position and turn it a little more to the driver's side and wiggle them off. All right, so you get the hang of it. We're gonna have to keep doing that until it looks reasonably loose. And then we'll come back and we'll do the even harder one on the driver's Guys, side. To get the driver's side nut, we're gonna use this tool and we're gonna use this curved end. So I'm gonna come down over here. I'll get this on first. 
and then you guys can see how it is. It's unfortunately that it's just even more cramped on this side. Yeah. Just come down underneath this kind of hose. There it goes. All right. So you can see it's on the it's on the nut there. And again, we're going to be moving it. Whoops! I knocked it off. Okay, there it is. We're going to be moving it to the driver's side. And if I take the flashlight out. come up top you can see kind of the orientation we got here all right so we got this tool running under this fuel pipe and then it curves over the top of the pumps flange area and then goes underneath to where that nut is and so you'll only be able to turn if you watch where I'm turning on the pipe here you're only going to be able to turn about that far so you don't damage that pipe. And again, you know, it might be better in some situations to remove it and get it out of the way before you have to loosen it and, and reposition it. I've got to put the flashlight, you know, back down there to, to show you where it goes. But this pipe up here is the primary obstruction in both cases. But I'm trying to do it without removing it because I figure a lot of people won't want to remove that. So, so I'm going to go ahead and keep loosening up that nut. And then we'll come back when we just got the last one on the top. All right, guys, we got both those lower nuts. Um, loosened so now we're going to come up here and put our turning tool into the two the two holes and I'll give you some more tips on loosening those nuts up in a minute and then I'm going to put my breaker bar up in the top it's got a 3 8 inch hole there and now what I'm going to do you could use the ends of the, the, the special tools but just for the camera work I'm just going to stick a regular 15 ratcheting wrench in here and then I just got to get into a position where I personally can see these scribe marks we made. So I'm going to loosen this guy up. And then I'm going to take the turning tool. I'm going to move the pump. Like that. Let me switch my guy to tighten now. Yep. There he goes. All right. Get him tight back up. And then I can take this off. Take the breaker bar off. Take the turning tool off. And you can see by our scribe marks that hopefully if I, my eyes are right, we've moved it over just about one millimeter. And so now if we go redo the uh, TDC offset, we should get a number closer to range. To do that, we're going to put the, take the flashlight here and just show you for a second. We're going to go ahead and put the intake crossover back on. We don't have to, you know, secure it down and torque it. We'll connect our, our two sensors so that we can start everything up without any codes. We'll put the screws in and we'll snug them down. We won't even bother with these clamps. We'll just start it up. We'll let it warm up to temperature again, and we'll redo that procedure. So we'll we'll go back inside the interior of the car and do that no. now. All right, guys, just going to button this guy up. Before we start it up, I had a little bit of a interruption because the overcast weather turned into a little shower for a minute. But we're back out here trying to wrap this up. Just like to do an opposing pattern. You can see I've connected up the, the two sensors already. And I'm not bothering to torque these things down because, like I said earlier, we just want to have it in a position where we can start the vehicle. I'm not going to install the crossbar, but uh, just in case, so it doesn't affect what we're trying to do, I will go ahead and tighten up the clamp on the edge here.
just enough to do this test. All right, the other thing I want to show you, if we, if we come look like uh, right over here, is just to give you an idea about the amount of space we're talking about here. So here's millimeters. Here's a penny. If I take a measurement of the width of a penny, it's roughly 1.3 millimeters. 1.3 millimeters, right? And that is two degrees. So you want to be less than this, less than the width of a penny. The amount of space in my case that I want to be moving is more like this. And so I have actually, after we filmed that piece, I actually went up there and, and, and rejiggered it a little bit back closer to this, where I've got just that much space. It's easier to see with something light behind it or not. Between the original mark and the mark we need to have. So let's go in and start it and see what we get. All right, guys, we got the truck started up. We're heating it back up again. You know, it had sat for a while when the rain came through and went down to 68. So we're waiting for the coolant temperature to get up to 170 again so that we can uh, repeat that TDC offset learn. Just for reference, I'm going to scroll up here and remind you guys that our current TDC offset is a lot of information here. Let me find that guy. Scroll through here and find that. There he is. All right, so our current one is negative 1.85. And so we needed to shave off at least negative 1.1 to get back into the factory specification and account for the timing chain wear. And that would be great if we got it on the first try, and that's what I was trying to do by actually using that micrometer and, and trying to get a look at the exact kind of gap I needed to see on the difference between the scribe marks once we moved the uh, injection pump more to the positive side to account for that. So moving it to the positive side, we're removing negative one point something. We just don't know yet. All right, so we're just waiting right now for that temperature to get to 170. Let's go see where that's at. And then we're going to repeat. Okay, so we're right on the money. We're at 170. So I'm actually going to let this sit for a second and just go back over here and review what we're going to do. All right, so again, we're trying to get into this range. Uh, down from the negative 1.85 down to at least negative 0.75. Now I know some of you are going to comment that it's good to be higher than this range. You get better performance, whatever. I'm, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in this having a nice quiet ride, not a lot of rattling, and easy to start in cold weather. So I'm aiming for this. Um, you know, if you guys want to run something different, that is up to you. This is the offset procedure though. So once I get to 170, which I'm at, I'm going to, and I don't have any DTCs, I'm going to turn the engine off and then I'm going to turn the ignition on with the engine off. And while the ignition's on, I'm going to hold the pedal all the way to the floor for 45 seconds. So pedal to the metal for 45 seconds. And then after the 45 seconds, I'm going to release the pedal. And there's a distinction here. You're going to, we're going to let it go to 45, then we're going to release the pedal. And then before we do this next step, which is turning the ignition off, there's going to be a difference in time there. So you're basically going to be like, I don't know, 46, 47 seconds with the, the time passing before we do this step. And then we're going to leave it off for 30 seconds. And at that point, after we've done this power down, it's going to trigger the powertrain control module to relearn this top dead center offset. So then we're going to restart the engine. We're going to re-verify we're at 170 degrees again. And then we're going to scroll down and see what the new TDC offset is. And it should have overwrote the one we had before. Now, if we're in, in the range, we're done. If not, we're going to go rinse, repeat what we just showed in this video and come back and do this again until we get the value that we want. So we're going to be down on step 10, checking to see if that offset is between that value. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to just go check the scan tool one more time. Yep, we're at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're in good shape. I'm going to turn the engine off. Okay, I'm going to turn the um, key to the on position, the glow plug cycle position. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the accelerator down once we get a, like a mark put in here. So I'm going to put my watch here. So mark, 45 seconds. Hold it all the way down for 45 seconds. I know this is kind of the boring part of the video, but there's really nothing else to see here. Coming up on the 11 will be 30 seconds. And again, the ignition 
key is in the on position, the glow plug cycle position. There's our 30 second mark. Coming up on 35. Coming up on 40. Coming up on 45 seconds at the two. Once we hit the 45 second mark, I'm going to release the pedal. And then I'm going to turn the ignition key off. And we're going to count down 30 seconds. So the three marked our 30 second countdown. When we get to the nine, we'll be at the 30 seconds off position. And at that point, the powertrain control module would have been triggered to relearn the top dead center offset once we restart the engine again. Sorry about that, this guy likes to go off to save power. All right, now we're at that 30 seconds with the power, the power off. We're gonna restart. Okay, she started right up. Okay, when I didn't put my uh, cable on here that I should have, just caused it to restart the Tech 2. We're just gonna have to rebuild the vehicle here real quick. Light truck, powertrain, get down to a Code F diesel. Four wheel drive, four speed automatic, data display, engine data. All right, engine coolant temperature is 176, so we're good to go there. See if we can get to this guy by going backwards faster. There he is, and he did not take. So I'm going to have to do this again. I guess I didn't uh, hold it down exactly the length of time. This thing is real finicky, as you saw in my previous video. You've got to get this, this timing just right. So I'm going to repeat that process I did before, and we'll come back. All right, we're redoing this. We're at the 45-second mark. I'm letting my foot off the pedal. I'm turning the ignition off now, and I'm going to leave it off for 30 seconds. What the, the thing you have to try and do is you have to try and at the end of the 45 seconds, you got to make sure you give a few seconds before you turn it off. And if you're a little bit quick on the trigger with that, it causes the PCM not to get into this state that we needed to get into to relearn this guy. All right, so we're up here at the 10, so that's our mark. We're going to restart it again. Good news is she keeps starting every time. Oh wow, okay, and now look at that, man. We are at negative 0.70. Get maybe that white selection off, make it easier for you guys to see. So, had to do it twice to get it, but I only had to adjust the pump once to get it. So, sorry about that first try. Um, again, let me show you what's going on there. It, the, the wording on this is real specific, and you got to—it's like typical GM service manual stuff with anything with the Tech 2. You got to really read it exactly, right? So hold the accelerator pedal in a wide open throttle position for a minimum of 45 seconds, which means you can't hold. If you hold it even a half a second less, the PCM won't go into this mode. It's got to get to 45 seconds straight up, but it can be more. So what I just did on this last run, as you saw, is I, I went to 46 and a half seconds, right? Almost 47 before I then let my foot off the pedal and then went over to the step here where I turned the ignition off. And I waited with the ignition off for 30 seconds because this doesn't say minimum. So when you see, you see this kind of language, it's exactly 30 seconds. Right? If you go a little bit over, you go a little bit under, it's not going to do it. So I held it to on the money 30 seconds and then restarted the engine and bam, it updated on the Tech 2 Live while we had the screen up, which is fantastic. So we are done with this injection pump adjustment procedure. Now we've got a couple other things to do under the hood before we wrap up the video. So let's go do that. All right, guys, we, if, now that we got it um, in the right TDC offset range, I just came back in here. I took the crossover back off. I just wanted to show you a view of this tool and, in, in, you know, rather than zoomed in down below, kind of from this perspective. So, you know, this is how I'm going in there and adjusting the pump with this tool between the breaker bar and the special tool to get the level of precision that you need 
for that kind of uh, a value like we saw with the micrometer and the penny. So I want you to see that kind of view there. So that's kind of like how this setup works. I also wanted to make sure we did a, a zoom out on these two wrenches. <laughs> because we spent a lot of time zoomed in, I wanted to spend some time zoomed out on these two wrenches, right? So this one here and flipped over on this end is what I was using on the, the, the nut that was on the lower passenger side. And I was using this tool running under that fuel pipe that you saw at the top. So coming underneath there and curving over the pump in order to loosen the, the passenger side, excuse me, the driver's side one. Now what I found is I actually had to, you know, kind of be willing to be flexible between these two because it's such a tight fit with the crossover. This is a 99 6.5 liter turbo diesel. So it's probably the most cramped uh, of all. I would imagine if you're doing this on a, on a pre-96 one, you might not have as, as much stuff in the way, but it's certainly on this one. I had to start with this, and then I later found out that taking the other tool and using this end uh, allowed me to tighten, right? So, you know, just be willing to, you know, the service manual doesn't specify how to use these tools because they're supposed to cover a wide range of years. So I found these two ends for the driver's side, this one end for the passenger side. Now, again, if you're not trying to film like I was, you could probably make use of whichever these you prefer, <coughs> excuse me, you prefer to do the top middle one uh, once you got it in position. I also wanted to be sure that I pointed out here that after I got this where I wanted it, I tightened the middle top bolt, excuse me, the middle top nut, and then I, is, you know, and I went in there and I, I got it as snug as I could because there's no torque value specified for this in the service manual. So I just got it as snug as I could, and, and then when I did the uh, passenger side one, I did the same thing. I only did those two for the test you just saw me do. I didn't do all three because it's such a pita to do the one on the driver's side. Now in my case, I had one of these 15 millimeter uh, ratcheting wrenches as well, 12 point. You got to have 12 point for these nuts and this worked out great to do the top uh, while I was trying to film uh, on here. I was also able to make use of this to help tighten the passenger side. Because, uh, you know, while you can't loosen with a tool like this because it's not bent, you can tighten with a tool like this. Now, we're going to swing back around, not as zoomed in as we were yesterday, but just a little bit, again, to help you familiarize your vehicle with what I've shown here. All right, guys, so, so here, if we zoom in, you can see the scribe mark, and you can see, I'm using this, like, uh, chopstick here to bring your attention to it. You can see it's less than a millimeter. It's less than a half a millimeter. So I would say we ended up doing probably around 0.45 to 0.5 at most of, of difference between our original scribe mark. And again, uh, you know, a little bit zoomed out now to, to, to bring your attention to some of these real PETA obstructions. This pipe here, this fuel line here, this, is, this rubber fuel line is going to be an obstruction. I was able to do this without removing it, though. I really didn't want to do that because I don't want to inject any air. It's going to end up down here with the optical sensor. You know, it should be able to clear itself out. But I don't like to do stuff like this on really old stuff, like uh, really old vehicles, because it ends up being some unexpected extra work. The other one that's going to be in your way when you're trying to work with this passenger side uh, nut is going to be this braided line here and this sensor here, which is hooked up to, um, looks like onto the coolant crossover here. So uh, removing the sensor harness doesn't help. The sensor itself is what's in the way. So again, you just have to be patient, improvise, switch between the two tools depending on the angle you get. Sometimes, like I said, it's useful to take that 15 millimeter ratchet wrench, even though you can't um, move it much, it can sometimes help you just move it enough so that the teeth will line up with the tool and you can proceed. And again, like I was trying to show with the uh, curved tool, what I ended up doing is I came under this hose to get at this nut down here on the passenger side. So that gave me, you know, this much travel. It's still not a lot, but it's way better than what I had trying to come in above it. And again, I was just constantly cautious and careful not to put too much pressure on this. You know, it's rubber. You can bend it a little bit, but it's also 21 years old. You're not going to be able to bend it much, at least in my case. Yours is probably going to be the same or older. So it's definitely going to go if you, you know, give it too much abuse. The next thing we're going to do, if we come back out a little bit, so we have protected this while we've been working on it. 
this gasket that you see in white is reusable. So if you've changed it recently, you don't have to change it again. In my case, I have never changed it, so I'm going to change it now. And I'm going to be replacing it with this GM 101375-37 part. And it's got the same number whether you get it from GM or AC Delco. And so you can see inside, right, it's just the same gasket that we see uh, mounted back there. And then the other thing that we're going to need to do on the crossover itself, when we put that back on, and I'll show you some pages in the shop manual, when we go to put the crossover back on, this end has to be sealed. So we're going to clean up this old sealant, both from inside the sleeve and on this end. And for something like this, I just use black silicone, Permatex, right, something like that. Um, RTV, something like that is fine. You're going to put that on here. And again, I'll show you how that is described in the service manual. And then we're going to button everything back up and we'll show it at the end. All right, guys, let's change this gasket out. So I'm going to pull this guy off first. And then we're just going to make sure that it's a good sealing surface. It's going to take just a little bit. In my case, I'm just doing a little bit of acetone. And then we'll put our our new 101375-37 gasket on, like so. And I'm showing you with the flashlight inside where this guy's going to sit. You know, I cleaned out most of it. You don't have to, like, scrape and scrawl to get all that out of there. And then what I did is I ran just a bead of black silicone sealant around this outside edge, like so. And then we're going to put it in and twist down. Put it until it seats and then twist down. Make sure our gasket stays where it needs to be. Go ahead and get one of your bolts to check the alignment and all of that. Usually once you get one of them in position, that's good enough. And then you can finger tight the others at each, each corner here. And then do the opposing corners. And then you can do the centers last. And then what we'll do on the other side here is we'll put the clamps back on and we'll just snug them up until the silicone sets in and then we'll torque everything down all right and we're going to bring our clamps back up to their original position and putting this guy back in there you may have to loosen it a bit to get it back over there that's what i'm going to have to do to get my wrench over there and loosen this guy before I can move him back. But what you want to see is a nice bead on the outside that comes out and then you can just smooth it off like that all the way around just to prevent any blowback from the turbocharger. And then let me show you in the parts book what the torque values are. So. excuse me, the service manual. So what we'll be doing here, so we've done this piece here where we've put this guy back on and the, the uh, mounting bolts for this are going to be 31 foot-pounds so that you can torque these down to 31 foot-pounds. Now they don't specify any particular uh, ordering or anything, but I like to do the opposing sides. And then when we put the cover back on, the shroud, those bolts, those 10 millimeters, are going to be 106 inch-pounds. So I'm going to torque all that back down, and we'll come back and see the finished product and wrap up comments. All right, go. All right, guys, we got it all buttoned up. I'm just going to give you these last few torque values. This short bolt and these two 13s, you're going to do 19 foot-pounds on those. These two um, hose clamps, you're going to do 50 inch-pounds on those. And, and again, the, the top cover, the four 10 millimeters that hold the shroud on, you're going to go uh, 106 inch pounds on those. And again, the uh, crossover underneath, 
was 31 foot-pounds. Now let me tell you something about some of these fasteners. Number one, this is going into aluminum on both here and underneath on the crossover for the intake. So you gotta have a torque wrench because you could strip the aluminum. If you don't have a torque wrench, just make them snug until you can get one. The second thing I'll tell you is that, you know, you can sometimes get mistakes in these uh, service manuals. And so when I'm torquing down something that goes into aluminum, if I'm getting close to the torque value in the book and it feels super, super tight, I stop there just in case, yeah, because I'd, I'd rather have that be a problem than actually stripping something out, particularly underneath here. I had a couple of the bolts under here that they, they just felt like, I, you know, I, would, I wasn't able to get them to 31. They already felt tight enough, and I just stopped. You don't necessarily have to hear that click from the torque wrench if it feels like they're already there. So we're done. I hope this helps you out on how to adjust the timing and get the correct specification on the top dead center offset for the 6.5 liter turbocharged diesel injection pump. If you've got uh, some comments about how I did this, you got some other things you did, maybe some type of tools you've improvised with, go ahead and leave them down below. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.